Hey guys, Happy New Year. This is the first tutorial of the year and I'm going to be using the round flat mold from Happy Dotting's company, New Multi Mold. Um, now this is about just over four inches wide. So I'm going to try and find the middle and uh, and try and find the center of the stone the best I can because we're going to be doing a Luna Moth. And I don't know if you guys know what uh, what the meaning of a Luna Moth is, but I'm going to find out so I can share it with you guys. So when I look up what the Luna Moth symbolism is, it's that they are attracted to the moon as a source of light. And in spiritual terms, they signify rebirth, new beginnings, because they gravitate towards the light in the darkness of the night a Luna Moth is seen as a symbol of spiritual transformation, of heightened awareness, and striving towards truth. So I thought that was pretty darn cool considering it was the new year and it's new beginnings. And uh, so this is pretty cool. It's not Christmassy. Uh, I'm done. I'm done with Christmas. <laughs> I still have my Christmas stuff up because I have not had time. So uh, I'm going to do a moon of course, because it's a Luna Moth and they're attracted to the moon. So I just used that little um, round circle uh, just to get my shape for my moon. It's a little lopsided and I don't mind. That's okay. So I'm going to work with this shape that I've got here. Um, I pretty much know I want my moth to be kind of centered and the moon just above. So I'm going to get a rid of, um, get a rid of, I'm going to get a rid of anything else that is there and that I don't want. I'm erasing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And you guys can hear my kids arguing or whistling or possibly bodily functions out in the background here. And that's due to them being at home, being homeschooled. And yes, it's been H-E double hockey sticks, let's just say. Um, it has not been fun. <laughs> There's been some tears. Uh, not all just from me. <laughs> There's been, it's been rough. I promise. I feel for anyone else who might be homeschooling. Um, because the technology just doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And uh, more of the time is spent uh, listening to the teacher ask students to mute themselves or unmute themselves or uh, stuff's echoing and glitching and I can't download the PDFs and I can't print them off. It's just not, it has not been fun. And uh, a lot of people are like, we're all going through it. We understand. And it is tough. It is tough for anyone who has to homeschool. And the problem with me is that if I'm not painting, I'm not earning any money. So I haven't had time to paint. And this is really affecting my paycheck <laughs> really bad, uh, the homeschooling is, and the frustration. So it's just been not fun, not fun. And the numbers are rising because of people celebrating in parties, in party fashion, over the holidays. So we are in uh, lockdown and yeah, I can't earn any money. <laughs> I can't uh, homeschool without somebody crying. It has not been fun. So I found the shape of the uh, moth. Basically, this is the general idea of where I want everything. And I'm leaving that light in color because that's going to be a light colored thing. But the rest I painted eggplant purple. Now, I did two coats of eggplant purple. I went around it with a paintbrush first and then I used Martha Stewart sponge daubers. Any sponge will work. Just, you know, find your find your moth shape again afterwards with white paint. And your moon. Find your moon shape again, but don't paint those areas dark purple because it's going to be hard to cover with the nice light, uh, very bright, almost like a lime green or sour apple uh, color to them. You don't want to you don't want to dim that light down with the dark purple underneath. So I'm suggesting to definitely uh, paint white after you're done with your your background color. 
especially if it's going to be dark like mine. Now, I just put those little dots there because those are going to be little points at the bottom of the wings. I am not a realistic artist. I'm self-taught. Um, so this is just going to be my cover. Like, I, I'm a, I, I like singing cover songs. I'm also a singer. Uh, well, in my own world, <laughs> I do have a couple of videos here on my channel, um, but they're just covers and I like covers because it's my version of something beautiful. You know what I mean? So this is my version of a beautiful Luna moth. That's all this is. And you can do your version um, however you want to, or you can do it just like mine. That's what I'm I'm giving you inspiration. That's all I'm doing. So this is my cover <laughs> of a Luna Moth. And it's going to be glittery. And it's going to sparkle. And it's going to shine. And it's going to have some gold. And it's going to have purple. Because I love purple. And uh, I also love the moon. I'm attracted to the moon. I don't know if you look up for the moon whenever you're outside. I do. We've had a lot of cloudy evenings lately. But um, I always look for the moon. I'm also a Luna Moth. <laughs> so welcome back everybody I'm really excited that I have had a moment uh it's probably due to the PlayStation <laughs> that's probably why I'm getting a moment to narrate this video for you guys so thank you PlayStation I really hope they don't start arguing though <laughs> So I have done two coats of white on both the moth shape and on the moon, and I'm letting those dry. But on top of my dry purple, my eggplant purple, it's all dry now. I'm using a sponge and I'm using hologram 2796. Now I'm just kind of filling in some glitter around the outside. I'm not touching the butterfly with it. As you can see, I'm just kind of um, stamping on that glitter with a sponge and I'm just putting it in the areas around everything. Okay, so leave the purple close to the but the uh, the moth. I keep calling it a butterfly. Keep the area around the moth purple, and then around like kind of like it's glowing with crisp with like little crystals of of glitter. I don't know how to explain it, but I hope that you guys can see how far I went with the glitter. So now I'm using a very bright green. It's called Sour Apple, and it is from Deco Art Americana. And uh, it's a nice, bright, bright, bright green. But we are going to dim this green down a bit. And we're going to be doing some blending with sponges uh, to get like a nice, soft, airbrushed look on our Luna Moth. So um, here comes the sponges. I outlined everything in that sour apple and now I'm blending on with a sponge. Be careful. Don't go over your edges. Be very, very careful. I'm getting pretty uh, brave using that big sponge in those little areas. So don't, don't be brave. Be careful. <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> My poor children. Um, so yes, I'm just blending it on. I've added a little bit of white. So I'm kind of like lightening it up a little bit. I'm only going to go down so far as you can see. And then I'm using some white to blend in that green. So it's going to kind of transition from green to light green or whitish colored and then down to yellow. So I'm putting that yellow color, which is actually cadmium yellow. And I've got that down at the tail bits of the, the bottom of the wing. And now I'm blending it up just above the little pointy parts on the wings. And then I'm going to add some white in there and I'm going to blend them together so that there's like a nice transition from white to yellow and white to green. You guys know what I mean, right? I hope I'm explaining myself okay. I know you couldn't see most of that, but you'll be able to soon. Uh, I literally just turned the bottoms of the wings yellow and then blended them up into the white area. So I'm going to be adding some glitter on top of these wings once they're dry. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to be using three different kinds of glitter again this time. Um, well, not really three different kinds, two different kinds with two different techniques. Three different techniques. I don't even know. So we're going to use some saffron yellow for the top of the uh, fuzzy little body of our moth. 
and I'm going to start with some saffron yellow at the top, but I'm going to blend it um, so that it goes from white up to the yellow. So I'm going to dim it down a little bit with white and blend those two colors in. We're going to be outlining everything with black and gold to kind of clean everything up and define all the lines very, very soon. I'm also going to be adding some eggplant purple to the tops of the wings and everything. So I just lightened my sour apple to make it like a light, light, light green. It's like almost white. That's how light it is. But there's still a tint of green. And I'm outlining these. I'm going to go back and use that um, light, light, light green very, very soon. I outlined the whole thing. But we're going to go back to that afterwards. We're going to use that to put some vein work inside the wings. So I decided not to do like a yellow moon like I normally do on like my hamsas and stuff. Um, I decided this time to do a blue moon. So I'm using peacock blue uh, at the bottom and I'm going to blend it so that the bottom is blue and the top is white. So I'm just going to keep blending it in using this little blending brush. There is a tutorial for how I make my blending brush. It makes life easier, trust me, because I haven't found sponges that are this small. Um, and I love using sponges because of the nice airbrushed look that it gives. Um, so I use a little uh, paintbrush and I chop it down and turn it into a blending brush. So my tutorial is in the description of this video. And if you cannot find the description of the video, just search Rachel's Rocks Blending Brush or Rachel's Rocks Fine Lining Brush and you'll be able to find it. So I blended it in so that the dark blue, the dark peacock blue is at the bottom and then it's blended lighter and lighter and lighter as you get to the top of the moon. Now I know my moon is not perfect. It's not a perfect crescent moon shape. It's a little bit wonky and that's okay. I promise you're going to love this anyway. It's not really going to matter if the moon looks a bit off. <laughs> they are attracted to the moonlight. I think that's really cool. I love the moonlight. Actually, who doesn't look for the moon when they go outside at night? <laughs> I sometimes see the moon when I walk my son to the school bus. So I'm outlining the top white and the bottom with the dark blue. I'm going to be going over all of that with gold anyway. We're going to be outlining the moon with gold. We're going to be outlining the moth with gold. So here is our second glitter. First it was hologram 2796 which is on the outside. Now we're using a mirror or chrome powder and it's like a goldish green. Very 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 fine powder and I just brushed that on using a makeup sponge. These powders are available on Amazon or at thepinkchair.ca and those links are both in the description. Don't forget to use my pinkchair.ca discount code Rachel Mitchell. So I'm back to that light green where I added white to sour apple, but I also add a little bit of water. So now it's like almost like a watered down uh, version and it's going to dry more transparent than what you can see here. So the veins aren't going to be as noticeable. They're not going to be as bold once it dries. Um, but you'll see that afterwards. You'll still be able to see the veins, but they're not going to be like, bah, you know? <laughs> um, so I am now outlining everything, making sure it's all cleaned up. If you have any mistakes or you went out of the edges with your, your sponge, uh, you can always get some eggplant purple back out and outline everything first. Um, but now we're going to do another technique with that chrome powder, that very, very fine, fine, fine powder. Uh, instead of using a goldish green, I'm going to be using a blue colored powder, uh, chrome powder or mirror powder, uh, which you can get once again at the pinkchair.ca or Amazon. Links are in the description. So I'm painting this with a gel UV top coat um, with a small, uh, you can buy disposable eyeliner brushes, makeup brushes. Um, so I'm using that. It looks like it's glow in the dark, but it's not. It's just the, <laughs> the UV light making it look that way. Um, so I have to set that underneath that gel on the moon. It has to be underneath the light for like 20 to 30 seconds. And then I'm going to use a makeup sponge to put the blue uh, chrome powder or mirror powder on top of that moon. So you can still see all of our blending work, but there's like a 
a shimmer of blue on top of that now and it makes it look totally different. So that's dry. We're gonna let that sit there. We're gonna work on making sure that the glitter on these wings aren't gonna go anywhere. Um, now that the vein work is dry, I'm putting Mod Podge over top of the wings to keep the glitter, that greenish gold glitter. I wanna keep that on the wings. I don't wanna lose it once I resin. So I'm keeping it there, letting that glue dry, the Mod Podge, let it dry. Um, now I'm going to outline it all with gold. You know me, I like gold. And if I don't have gold in a tutorial, I actually feel sad. <laughs> so it doesn't happen very often. There's usually some gold incorporated, even if it's just my initials <laughs> on the bottom of the rock. Um, so I'm outlining everything with gold. Once that gold is dry, I'm going to outline it with black as well. And make sure that we can see the, the wings get separated, the body gets separated from the wings. Um, I'm going to outline the moon with gold as well. Everything's going to dry nicely. We're taking our time and, and doing this in certain steps so that everything dries properly. Uh, you never want to resin your rocks or spray your rocks if the paint is not dry completely. And you want to also wait at least a week I would say just to be safe before painting rocks that you've made yourself. Um, even if it says it's like quick dry cement or, or what have you, your painting may not look right when you're done if you paint on rocks that aren't completely dry. So I always make my rocks up and plan to paint them at least a week later. So make stock up so that you, you can do that. Make sure you stock up. So I have let this sit for a week and I very much waited impatiently to paint it. <laughs> but at least I know it's dry. That's all I care about. So everything's outlined in gold. You can barely see those veins, but there's now like a weird glimmer on the wings because of the Mod Podge glue. It's just clear glue, basically. Um, so now I've made a second gold line up the wings and I'm capping off the top of the body here with gold. And I'm gonna run an eggplant purple line all the way across. So we're keeping the gold on either side of that purple we're just kind of, it's like a little ditch in the gold and it's going to be purple. It's like, uh, oh, I don't even know what to call it. Um, but yeah, there's, there's gold outlining that purple. And this is all part of Luna Moths. Look them up. I saw purple and I fell in love. I don't care what kind of creature they are. If there's purple on them, they are my friends. <laughs> so now we're going to do little hooks. And I put, I'm going to just say they look like little seeds that are sprouting upside down. Okay. So they look like little hooks, but I'm doing like a little seed pod on the end of the hook in gray. So it's purple and gray. And then I'm doing the little set of eyes and these eyes are so cool. Um, I'm doing a little set of eyes on the wings in slate gray. And what I'm doing is I'm using my blending brush again because it's such a little area you got to work in there. And I'm doing the lower part of the eye white and keeping the upper part gray and just kind of blending it in. Then I'm going to do a smaller eye using some black uh, well, outline this with dark purple first, the eggplant purple. And now I'm using a little bit of black mixed with a little bit of gray. So it's kind of been dimmed down a little bit. It's not like bold black. Um, and I've made like little eyes there. And I'm going to outline the bottom with purple as well. Make sure that there's purple there. And now they look like little eyeballs. Ooh, staring right at me. <laughs> Very cool, though. <laughs> you do what you want with the eyeballs. Get creative. They're cool, huh? <laughs> now I'm going to do some fluffies on the front of the head, too, after I outline this all with black. I know you guys can't see everything that I'm doing. I apologize. It's because I brought you in closer to do the eyes so that you could see what I was doing. Then I forgot to move you away again. So you can see what I was doing, but I'm outlining. I'm just outlining everything in black, a nice fine line of black. Um, the moon's been outlined in gold. 
We're just separating, you know, the wings. We can see the wings now. We're separating the moth from the the black bat or the purple background. And this is going to look totally different when we see it resin. I promise you guys, you are not going to believe how different it looks covered in resin. Just make sure it's dry before you seal it. Make sure everything is dry. Because if your paint is still wet, it can cause um, blemishes in your resin, like bubbles. Sometimes it sometimes it won't even dry there properly at all, um, or it'll leave like little divots. Be careful you don't like let your kid touch your rock after he was eating greasy cheesies. And yeah, you try and clean it, but <laughs> resin does not like sticking to grease. I'll tell you that. So I'm going to do some fluffies. I know they're antennae, but I want to do, um, they're going to be called fluffies. Little moth fluffies. <laughs> I'm using saffron yellow first. I did a black uh, stick and now I'm doing saffron yellow and I'm making them fluffy with the saffron yellow, but then I'm also going to go over that with gold so that they stand out over top of the moon there. So here comes the gold, just making them fluffy with the gold. This is my fine lining brush, which is also linked in the description. I should have a little, little song, a little ditty about checking the description for stuff. <laughs> Uh, too much, Rachel, too much. So I think this is almost ready. I don't know about you guys. Pretty sure it's ready for resin. <laughs> my favorite part, I wish I had a drum roll, but I do not. And I'm surprised that my children have stayed quiet for this long. So, uh, you guys, it's been a good day. <laughs> Today is a good day. So look at that holographic glitter, the hologram glitter. It looks amazing. The purple looks like purple now. There's that fine, fine glitter on the wings that stayed where I wanted it to. It stayed exactly where it was supposed to. Look at the moon. There's all these different types of glitter in, done in different ways, and they make it look so different. Each technique looks so different, uh, and it's gorgeous. Like, I mean, I don't know what... I don't know why I haven't painted one of these beautiful moths before because I really do like it. And of course I incorporated my favorite color in the background. Let me know what you guys are doing with this. Are you guys going to paint it just like this? Are you going to change the background? Are you going to change the eyes? Um, let me know. Make sure you let me know. Send me pictures, rachelsrocksCanada at gmail.com or Rachel's Rocks on Facebook. I just want to tell you guys how thankful I am that you guys are here with me for another year. Uh, thank you for your loyalty and your patience. It's been tough for all of us, but I'm so glad that you guys have been the best, most supportive group of people in the world. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to give me some ideas for new tutorials. I can't wait for what this year has to bring for us. Um, and I want you all to promise me one thing, two things, stay safe and keep painting. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.